Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, today is Sunday, June 11th, I want to say, of the year 2023. I pray that you've had a nice weekend. Um, and this is welcome to our, uh, our weekly prayer um, session. So um, what I mentioned in the last week was like, if you have any prayer requests, um, if you could submit them on this video and I'll add them to my list. And I continue praying daily for every single one of my requests. I'm currently on my third page of prayer requests. Um, and the Lord has answered many of them. So I thank him for that. Um, I received some last week. So I'm going to read those those prayers. And, and then also mention briefly the topics, the, the issues that we have, um, the needs that we have from the other prayer requests that have been submitted to me in the last uh, 60, 70 days now. I think we're up to like 70 days from when we began our prayer journey back in um, on Easter. So with that, I want to read really quick um, from a psalm and then mention the request and then go into prayer. So um, Psalm 73 is the, the psalm that the Lord placed on my heart. And I was wondering, like, why did the Lord place this one on my heart? And you'll understand when I read the first eight or nine verses, you'll also probably say, be saying, why is he reading this psalm of all psalms when we are in, we are in need? So in uh, Psalm 73, verse 1, it says, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I want to pause there one second. And here it says that truly God is good to Israel. But remember, we have been grafted to Israel through Jesus Christ. So God is good to us too, not just Israel. And also here he's talking about, he's saying that um, that he was envious of the boastful um, and the wicked. But remember what the Lord tells us, tells us about envy, that we shouldn't be envious of anyone or anything. So I continue reading in verse 4, and it says, For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm, this being the wicked. They are not in trouble as other men, They are, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than their heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouths against heaven, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here, and water ha waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is their knowledge in the most high? They question. Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. And I have a little note here on my, my Bible here. I wrote, are they really at ease? They increase in riches. So I want to stop there because the psalm is pretty long. I encourage you to go and continue reading this psalm. So I was like, why is the Lord placing this? I mean, this psalm is telling us about how the wicked increase, how the wicked become rich, how the wicked don't have the the worries or the cares in the world that we as believers have, that most people, who the ones who are not rich, who are not wicked, why does it always seem like we're the ones that are always suffering? We're the ones that things are always falling upon us. So as I was reading this, the Lord reminded me of one of his parables, which we'll probably touch um, in a couple of weeks. One of his parables, the parable that I really love, um, it's the parable of Lazarus. The beggar, not the not Lazarus that Jesus rose from the dead. Lazarus, the beggar, and the rich man. I encourage you to go read it. It's in uh, in Luke 16, beginning in verse uh, 19. Yeah, I wrote it down. Beginning in verse 19 and going to the end of the chapter. It's such a beautiful parable. Um, and as I said, I'm going to do one of, one of our parable studies on it. Um, but we see how this um, this poor man, Lazarus, this beggar, was suffering in this world how he suffered but we see the end we see the end and how glorious it is and how beautiful it is so without giving it away i encourage you if you want to go read it go read it and then um i'll like as i said i'm, I'm doing a study on it and then uh we also see if you continue reading okay and this is how it is always with the word of god especially in the psalms you always see how the psalmist was always talking about 
um, the bad things that are happening to him, how things are horrible, how he's suffering, what he's going through, his struggles, and he's he's praying and asking the Lord to deliver him. And, you know, why does it seem like everybody's increasing? Everybody's doing better, but not me. Why? You know, kind of like a woe is me. But at the end, in almost every single Psalm, what do you see at the end? He's always praising and glorifying the Lord. Why? Because like in the middle of the Psalm, you'll usually see how the Lord delivered him, how the Lord delivered him from his troubles, from his anguish, from his needs. And so it is with us that we are to be patient with the Lord and and know that he hears our cries, just as he heard the psalmist. And know that he um, will answer our prayers. Pro maybe not in this world, maybe not in this life. Uh, maybe we'll, you know, receive our deliverance, our answer in heaven. But it doesn't matter because we know that he works in this perfect time. And so I pray that whatever you're going through, whatever struggles you're going through, that uh, this the Psalms of, uh, of Scripture, the beautiful Psalms of, of David and the other Psalmists, I believe there were like three or four other Psalmists, I, I'm, um, I pray that you would look at it and, and you would see um, that the Lord is faithful to, to answer. And just like in the book of Ecclesiastes, we see what Solomon went through, what he didn't go through. He was, you know, he was actually enjoying a lot of things. But at the end, he finds what he finds in all his toils and struggles. What he find? That the, his purpose in life is not to enjoy all the riches in this world, to enjoy the bountiful and the plenty that the Lord gave him and to, and to just be gluttonous. But his purpose in life is to serve God. And so how beautiful it is. So I pray that you you uh, find what your purpose is and your purpose is to serve God in whatever capacity he calls you to um, to serve him. And then um, so I want to go over to uh, to our prayer requests. All right. I want to lift up in particular. I want to lift up those prayer requests that have been um, submitted to me this past week. Um, but one thing I want to for those of you who, who have been on this journey with us from the beginning of this prayer journey. Or even if you came in the middle or towards the end, I always lifted up a, a lady by the name of Moya who was in hospice. Um, she was my sister Emma's friend. She she passed away early last week. So when I ask you if you can kindly pray for um, Moya's family, for the Lord to give them comfort and peace in this time of loss. We know how hard it is to lose a loved one. Um, and I know from the videos that I've watched of Moya and from my, what my sister told me, um, she was saved, so I thank God for that. That's the one joy that I get out of it. Um, but I pray that her family members are also um, saved. I don't know if they are. And um, I know I saw how Moya was in one of her last videos and how she was at peace. Um, how she trusted in the Lord. She loved the Lord. And, you know, she was at peace with, you know, her fate, which is the same fate that we all face maybe not, you know, as quickly as, as Moya did. Maybe some of us, you know, tomorrow, you don't know. That's why it's important to, you know, have the Lord in your life. Or it might be, you know, 50 years from now. We don't know. But, um, so I want to pray for, for her family. And I pray that they do know the Lord as Moya did. So, you know, join me in, in praying for, for Moya. And then I also want to lift up uh, this lady by the name of Annette. It's uh, one of my subscribers. His name is Louis Toriano. His, that's his mom. He asked me if I can pray for her. Uh, he has submitted other prayers in the past for um for other issues but um his mom is suffering from um uh, memory issues she's having issues with her memory uh due to chemo um, so i'm assuming that his mom is going through um chemotherapy for cancer so let's pray that the lord will restore her um her memory and not only restore her memory but that this chemo is successful and removes removes every single cancer cell in her body um also uh Another person by the name of Philip P. I'm just going to use his first, uh, his initial from his last name, Philip P. He asked if we can pray for him to be reunited to his son. Um, this uh, this touches me in a way because um, I have a son and I love my son and we've always been close. And he's he still lives with me. So, um, but also somebody else that I know that um, his relationship is not what it should be with his father. So, I pray for uh, for the Lord to reconcile and to to reunite. Those earthly relationships of uh, not just uh, father and son, but mother, mother and daughter, you know, father and daughter and, and just family members in general. It doesn't have to be just, you know, your, your close family members that you live with, but it could also be um, other relatives, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and, and also friends. I mean, so, so many, 
we see what happened in the last couple of years and there have been so many relationships that have been broken, have been destroyed over the stupidest things, people arguing and disagreeing over something that, you know, really shouldn't and should not impact uh, a true relationship that we have with other people. So I pray for the Lord to restore all these relationships. Um, and also uh, a lady by the name of Christina, she asked if I can pray for her relationship with uh, Bradley. I'm assuming that Bradley is her boyfriend or fiance. And also for um, her relationship with Bradley's daughters, um, Faith and Lucy. So it um, seems like she's coming into uh, this family, um, a man with two beautiful daughters. And I pray that they would uh, they would see Christina's heart just as the Lord sees it. And that the Lord will uh, will unite them together again. Speaking about uniting, we unite them together. And and I pray that Christina will um will be a good ambassador of Jesus Christ to them. Will be a good witness of Jesus to them. So uh, I pray for that. And then lastly, the last one. I actually have two more. Um, uh, one of my uh, one of my subscribers. Um, his first initials M. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this person's name because I'm just gonna butcher it. Yeah, but the last name is Mueller. Okay, so M U L L E R Mueller, um, not Mueller, Mueller. So um, they sent me an, uh, a request, a prayer request for um, a Bible school in Lake Constance, Germany. Um, they're young people there. A friend of her, a friend of this person, um, is in that Bible school, and the the children, are, the young children, are, are suffering from mental issues, depressions, and so many things. And we see in the last especially in the last two or three years with everything that's been going on with COVID and everything, how so many young people are suffering from uh, from mental illness and, and depression and how sad it is, how the families are being broken up. And, and it reminds me of, uh, I mean, I had no intention to go in here, but it reminds me of how, especially in my country, how they're, they're saying that, you know, you don't need a father in a household, you know, that that's not a typical, you know, the, the old traditional family you know, they're saying, oh, that's no longer, it's not necessary. Well, you know what? They've removed the fathers from the houses and they've not held the, uh, fathers accountable for being the head of the house. And look what's happening. Look what's happening. It's destroying young minds. It's destroying young kids. Um, and then the school systems also uh, and the media. And, and we see with the cell phones and so many kids are spending time on, on TikTok and yes, YouTube and all the other social media platforms and how it's impacting their mind it's it's doing nothing but destroying them and you know i i wish that we never had social media i wish we never had it because i think um there was a time where people were healthier mentally um i just think that social media is so much bombarding people nowadays that we don't know what's truth we don't know what's what's what to believe anymore I, it's funny because i was just going through my emails and I'm, I'm just deleting them and i'm looking at all of them all, and and just the topic itself and i'm like what's truth? What What do you believe anymore? Because you're getting one email telling you one story about something and then you get another email telling you the opposite about that thing. And like, you know, it's just, it's just confusing. And that's why these kids are going, growing, growing, growing up confused because what's being fed to them in the media. Um, So, you know, I only know one thing that the only, the only truth there is, is the word of God. That's the only thing that I lean on, that I know, that I trust and I believe. So we are to predicate our lives on the Word of God and everything that the Word of God and not deviate from it and live in according to how the Word of God instructs us and teaches us. So I want to pray for these young men and women, uh, these young children in, in that school and, and for the teachers, um, the people who are watching over them, and that they would um, give them godly advice, words of love, words of truth, words of peace. And lastly, I want to pay, pray for um, for Canada and for all the people in Canada through these fires that are going on. I'm, I was watching a video yesterday of a couple of, of a couple of uh, YouTube channels that I follow and how the fires, they're not only on the East Coast, they're on the West Coast. I knew that, I knew that they've been on the West Coast for a while. And I follow, um, I used to follow this guy called Canadian Prepper, but I stopped following him because he, he's went off the cliff with some of the stuff that he was, you know, um, he was posting. But um, I watched one of his videos the other day just to see how it's going because he's from Canada. And the wildfires are crazy. They're burning out of control. They can't even control them. And uh, as you know, Canada is probably 80% forest. And it's huge. It's actually bigger than the United States. Um, if you look at the provinces all the way up north. So um, 
you know, it's just burning. And there's a lot of theories behind it, whether these fires were started by nature, started by accident, or started on purpose, some people are saying. Um, it's funny because I, uh, <laughs> I was telling somebody about that. But anyway, so, um, you know, we need to pray for the people of Canada. We need to pray that these fires are put out, no matter how they started, that they're put out and that, um, you know, people's lives and property are, are spared. And, and also we need to uh, keep in mind about the wildlife, you know, the beautiful, beautiful creatures of God, the animals that are getting destroyed, you know, their habitations are being destroyed and they are being destroyed through these fires. So, um, we need to, uh, we need to lift up these people and pray that the Lord will touch them and heal them and protect them from these fires. So with that, let's, uh, keep in mind all the other prayer requests that have been submitted to me in the, in the past couple of weeks. Um, many people asking for healing, whatever healing you need, whether it be physical, spiritual, financial, um, healing through relationships, um, whatever you're, you're going through, I pray that the Lord will touch you. Um, and, and I'm, I'm glad to say that many of the requests that I received have also been for salvation for lost family members and loved ones or friends. Um, I know this, uh, this lady asked me, uh, Last week, daughter of God, of salvation for this young man by the name of Elijah, who she's been ministering to, who she's been witnessing to, who works in a grocery store. And I pray that Elijah comes to know the Lord. And many of you out there who have asked for family members, myself included, to uh, to come to know the Lord. Because, you know, we don't, we, tomorrow's not guaranteed and we don't know when, when the Lord is going to return. I mean, everybody is out there speculating and Given the two cents as to when he's returning, um, I'm guilty of doing it maybe in one or two of my videos in the past. But, um, you know, it's only human nature to to want to know, to want answers. And But there's some things that the Lord um, keeps to himself. He will not reveal it. He does not reveal everything. So, you know, everything, uh, there's one thing about the, the rapture. It's, it's a mystery. Okay. And with that, I'm going to post a video hopefully this week about the mystery and what the mystery is. So um, we're going to continue lifting up in, in prayer for those people who need healing, also from uh, mental healing, people who are struggling. As I mentioned, these young people, but there's also adults, a lot of adults who are, who are suffering um, you know, mental attacks. The enemy loves to attack the mind. You know, I always say that the, the enemy loves to attack us where we are weakest, which is in our mind and in our hearts. But we are only weak in our mind and, our, and in our hearts if... Because what we feed it, if we feed it the garbage in the, of this world, the lies of this world, that's where the enemy's gonna, you're gonna give him a foothold and allow him to come in. But if you continually feed your heart and your mind with the things of God, with the word of God, um, the enemy can't come in. He, he cannot, he can't even, you know, yeah, he'll put a, maybe a little thought in your mind, but right away the spirit's gonna say, that's not of God. Ignore it. And that's what I do, you know, because he, he does play with my mind sometimes or tries to play with my mind sometimes. But I do not give in to, to uh, his foolishness. Um, you know, that's all he speaks is foolishness. So uh, any other, all the other prayer requests, whatever, the ones that, uh, whatever reason I, I may have forgotten or don't remember or don't have time to read, um, I'm going to lift them up. So with that, join me in prayer. And also before I, I go into prayer, um, look for tomorrow. I'm going to post um, our next uh, parable of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to do uh, the prodigal son. So anyway, and I, I I was doing it the other day. I was praying and I, I put it together. And um, I really like I really like how the Lord placed it in my heart, uh, my hands. So uh, I, think, I think you'll like it too. So with that, let's go into prayer. Lord, Father in heaven, I thank you for another blessed morning, Lord. I thank you for your love, for your mercy, and for your never-ending grace, Lord, towards each and every single one of us out here, Father. We just thank you how good you are to us, Lord. And as we read in your Psalms, Lord, we, we see how sometimes it looks like the, the evil in this world, Lord, the, the evil people are the ones that are prospering, Lord, how it seems like they have all the riches, how they have all the joy. But let us always remember, Lord, that this is just temporal, this world. The things that happen in this world, just temporal, Lord. And the most important thing are the eternal things, Lord. And those are the things of God that we, as believers, Lord, even if we are uh, poor or destitute in this world, we know that our riches abound in heaven, Lord. And one day soon we will be partaking of those riches that 
you have prepared for us, Lord Jesus. So I just pray for my brothers and sisters out there, Lord, and keep their eyes focused on you, Lord. I pray that they would not look to what the world is doing, how the world, how the evil in the world seem to, to get ahead, Lord, and don't worry about that because they will enjoy those things now, but their eternal, eternal destiny, Lord, it's, it's something that we don't even want to wish upon them, Lord, so we need to pray for them. We need to pray that they know you, Lord Jesus, that they will turn their hearts and minds away from the things of this world and turn it towards you, Lord. And let us let us be a light, Lord, to them, Lord. Let us be a good witness, Lord, a good example. Let us be a perfect ambassador of you, Lord Jesus. So I just thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to, to go and to, to speak to the lost, Lord, to speak in love and in, in peace, Lord. I thank you for the many blessings that you pour upon us, Lord, whether it be just a cup of water or whether it be a, a mansion, Lord. Whatever we have, may we always remember that it comes from your, your loving and gracious hands, Father. We just thank you, Lord, and I pray that we learn to become good stewards of, this, of the things that you entrust in us, Lord, that you give us, Lord. May we always remember that you bless us so that we may be able to bless others through these blessings, Lord, and how beautiful it is, Lord, that we, we share whatever you give us, Lord, with those who are in need, Lord Jesus. So I just thank you, my Lord. I thank you for laying your life down, Lord, and, and, and going to that cross, Lord, willingly and lovingly, Lord, because you said greater love has none that to, than to lay their life down for their friends. So how beautiful it is, Lord Jesus, that we can not only call you King, God, Provider, Healer, uh, everything, Lord, you're everything to us, but you're also a friend, Lord Jesus, because you told us that you are our friend. So we just, we thank you, Lord, and we come to you in reverence, Lord, as as Savior of our lives, Lord, for for such a beautiful act, for just laying your life down for us, Lord. And I lift up all these prayer requests, Lord, the ones that, have, that, I, that I mentioned, Lord, and even those that I didn't mention, you know them, Lord Jesus. You know every single one of them, Lord, just like you know every single hair of our head, of our body, Lord. So I just lift them on to you, and, and I just pray, my Lord, that you would reach down to my brothers and sisters in Christ and heal them, Lord, that you would reconcile those broken relationships, Lord, that you would just heal those who need mental healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, whatever it may be, Lord. I just lift them on to you, knowing that in your perfect time and in your perfect will, you'll You'll answer them, Lord, because you hear our prayers, Lord, just as the psalmist says so often, you hear our prayers. And Lord, I lift up to you those who are not saved, those who do not know you, Lord Jesus, especially our relatives, our brothers and our sisters, our mothers and fathers, uncles, aunts, cousins, whatever, Lord, in-laws, even our co-workers and our friends, Lord, I, everybody that we come in contact that do not know you, Lord. I pray that your spirit will reach down and, and touch their heart, Lord, would impress them himself, upon their hearts, Lord, and that they would seek you, Lord, and that we would be a light for you, and that we would tell them of you and the beautiful thing that you've done for us, Lord, which is give us the free gift of salvation, Lord, not because of anything that we could do or, or have ever done, but everything that you did on that cross at Calvary, Lord Jesus. Let, it be, let us be a light unto the world, Lord, as you called us. As you tell us, we are a light to the world and we are salt to the world, Lord. So let us flavor them, Lord, with your word, with your goodness, Lord Jesus. And just lead us, Lord. May we always keep focus on you and lead us in, on this beautiful, beautiful journey that you have placed us on, Lord. And may we be diligent and working until you come and receive us unto yourself. And I ask this, Lord Jesus, in your precious and holy name. Amen. God bless you, my friends, and I'll see you tomorrow for our study on the prodigal son.